<laughs> oh, welcome to another episode of Hash to Find Training Podcast. I'm your host, the undead, Ronald Sosa. So, yeah, the intro is cheesy, but to be honest, it was either going to be that or me go the extra mile of putting sound effects of zombies trying to break into the lab and me trying to survive and... But in all honesty, though, that, yeah, I, there's just no way I'm going to be able to do that in, su- in such a short amount of time. Although I say that, I actually, I actually have been planning to do a Halloween special uh, for the last two weeks or so. And it was just trying to come up with what I'm actually going to talk about that was the hardest part, really. Or at least I felt it was the hardest part. In all honesty, though, I only really just made my mind up as to what I'm going to be talking to you about in this episode and hopefully keep it until the Halloween special. Now, to start with, I want to talk to you about is that uh, as I was trying to search for things to talk about, uh, I figured, you know what, I'll just go and, I, you know, I wish I hadn't, but I, I'll just go online and see what kind of patterns uh, were created during the, well, during the 31st of October. And although I didn't really get as far as actually searching for that, maybe that would be next year's, maybe, I don't know. Because, to be honest, like, I basically searched uh, digital scary, like the, those two queries, just to kind of see what it comes up with. And although I didn't get what I wanted, um, you know, some sort of pattern with those two keywords actually embedded within those uh, patterns or within that document. But what I did find was something far, far scarier, a pattern where the title is interactive toy. Now, the title doesn't really mean much. It is the description of the pattern that scared the hell out of me. And that is because I, you know, I'll be up front. You know what? No, I'm not going to skip ahead. I'm actually going to try and read out the pattern if if I can. I mean, I'll try and uh, actually go into and kind of give you a bit more description because, yeah, I feel it's it's going to affect a lot of people out there. And although I don't know how much power this particular pattern has, or whether I'm, I'm even reading this correctly. In fact, what I'll do is I'll make sure that I'll uh, link this pattern onto the podcast or into the description show notes so you can have a read yourself and tell me if I'm wrong. I'm hoping I'm wrong. I'm hoping somebody else reads and going, you know what, Ronald, you're an idiot. You misread. This has nothing to do with what you're on about. But the reason why I find it scary is because I feel it's going to affect uh, the kind of robots that I've been wanting to put together. Because in, in some sense, uh, this pretty much kind of eats up on that side of things and okay so the title says interactive toy and that seems to suggest that yes this is for some sort of toy and you know to be honest I was looking for something toy related when I was searching for patterns so I I figured it's not too bad but basically the invention says the invention provides a toy which uh, comprises the following steps processor and a processor coupled memory uh yeah okay so that's quite a lot of hardware out there by using the output of the processor coupled, as well as a device for establishing network connection for at least one other such toy, and the processor includes, uh, sorry, the, uh, the processor includes is provided by controlling the network connection of each toy device for output. In addition, the control device is, transmit, is transmitting the instruction to control in the network connection is established uh, network connected to the polarity, uh, sorry, plurality of output of each of the toys. Um, okay, so that was very vague abstract, and basically that's saying that there are patterning a, well, they're creating a pattern for toys that are connected together by a network, and those toys have processors and coupled memory. Uh, I'm, I'm going to assume what they mean by coupled, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing there's a lot more to that, but I'm guessing what they mean by that is a processor with an external memory. They don't mean my controller, but I'm here picturing a uh, Raspberry Pi, two Raspberry Pis, connected by Wi-Fi, talking to each other, okay. Now, the fact that they're saying that this is going to be a toy seems to suggest that unless those two devices are, are, are sort of toy, doesn't infringe in this abstract. And the claim goes into a lot more detail than that. Uh, and to be honest, I could be going through here and explaining everything, but it kind of goes through a lot. Like, for example, how you uh, ID the devices, how the messages are set up. Uh, it even goes far as talking about the, the transmitting and receiving. I'll be upfront. To me, this is going to affect swarm robots. Now, I'm I'm sure I am wrong on this. I'm, I'm hoping that I'm wrong, and I'm hoping that uh, if anybody out there fancy having a read and going into more details with this, um, to just tweet me, and I'm happy to do another episode to kind of um, to correct myself if that's the case. 
uh, even if it means pulling this episode if I have to. But I, you know, I want somebody out there have a look at it because you know what? I feel like I need to read more on this uh, because this is really, to me, it scares the hell out of me. Because the fact is, I, you know, I love robots and there's, there's a good, I reckon there's going to be a good market in the future for selling interactive robots. The robots that are actually interact with each other, swarm robots, even though that's, they're still in the research stages, you can consider them to be like this. And there was a um, a project, I, I can't remember if I mentioned this in the in any of the podcasts, I'm sure I did, I, I forget. But there was a project that I worked on uh, which was, according to my friends, it was my idea, but I, I don't remember actually coming up with the idea. Uh, it's one of those things, though, like ideas that are like a million to one. You come up with plenty of them. If you come up with too many of them, you kind of forget, you know, if you come up with any in the first place. But to be honest, it was just an idea, though, of us kind of working on this little SOM robot project, which was meant to be a game system. And the idea is that we've got this whiteboard, um, and then we have a projector projecting down, and we have a camera, and the idea is that you can use the whiteboard to draw your map of the of the uh, of the well, whatever um, interactive environment you want to have, and then you basically create lots of little robots all talking to each other by infrared. And uh, although at the time we set it up so that everything talks back to the computer and the computer sends messages back, but the idea is that you'd be able to control those robots by uh, external controllers, uh, but they should be able to talk to each other and stuff like that. But even though we never got as far as actually getting to talk to each other, we got as far as um, actually creating a game out of it uh, with a camera actually uh, recognizing where all the roads are located, the directions. Um, and basically that's, you know, it's not far removed from a swarm robot system because you just need to go one extra step and actually program the logic to allow them to interact with each other. And the fact that they already had a connection between them, in this case it was IR, uh, infrared, um, eventually we were thinking of just moving on for something more reliable than the actual connection we had. So it would have been something like, I don't know, whether it was RF, Bluetooth, I know, you know, I know there's still RF, but like, you know, box standard, simple uh, FM or, or PM modulation with the cheap modules you can buy or going as far as something like something more expensive like XPs or Bluetooth modules or whatever you want to come up with. But what worries me is that, yeah, that isn't too far removed from what this pattern is on about. And if it was, if we had gone as far as actually designing to take this further on and maybe make a market out of it or anything like that, would we, have we been worried about this? Would this have been an issue to us eventually? Could they have, because the fact that they've got a pattern for it now, and God knows how long um, they've been in the works to try and create this pattern. I mean, when when did it get published? It got applied on 2008 and published in 2010. I think it was around that period as well when we were creating a, a little set of robots. But that, to be honest, that a processor with attached memory, like... That's a Raspberry Pi. You know what I mean? Like, like, or you can you get yourself one of those um, arm, pro, arm calls that you can have an external memory or an external RAM. But, 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 what the hell? Come on. You're pretty much saying that anybody creating um, you know, uh, controllers out there... I mean, does, does coupled memory count as... Um, uh, does coupled memory count as... Uh, as well, internal memory built in, like a, uh, like a single patch, uh, package... My controller, even though they're explicitly saying processor, because you know that's really what the whole point of my controller is—the fact that it's got everything all built in. Uh, although, you, like as I, as I mentioned, like, that you can get some of my controllers that have external memory. Would that class as processors? Uh, I, I don't know. This annoys me. It really does. And I, what annoys me is the fact that I wasn't looking for this sort of stuff. I was just looking for patterns for projects. There are people created in Halloween that I might find interesting to talk about here. And I was literally just going to get like the top 10, go through and talk about it and maybe spark anybody's interest out there about, oh, look at that. And I think it's kind of a healthy thing, really, if you want to kind of see what's going what, what's going on out there. Because there's a lot of stuff that don't get introduced into the consumer realm or into the um, or any of the other industry. They're just doing in the research or maybe they're just being patented and they're still in the process of actually going far. But I, I do feel like patterns are a really great way for us to learn what's happening in other fields outside our own. And although it's kind of, a, I feel like it's a little bit uh, weird because you've kind of seen what other people are creating before they're actually releasing some cases. And so, you know, you know use co- your, your common, your common, uh, common sense or common, oh, use your conscience, I guess you can say. Uh, as to what you do with information, but I find that, you know, if I want to find out what's going on in, the, uh, in say, 
um, I'm trying to think of, of, of a field that I don't know much about in the nuclear uh, industry. Then it would be nice to kind of search and see what what kind of patterns are being created and why they created this pattern in the first place, or are they just being just companies being randomly creating patterns for the sake of having something that may or may not be created in the future? But anyway, this kind of annoyed me because it, you know what I, I kind of feel like I'm complaining for no reason because there's plenty of people out there complaining. Oh, there's plenty of people out there who pointed out that you know patterns are pointless and you know they're they're. They're just being created just for the sake of screwing out the system. Then they need to be as general as possible to actually make them effective. But this kind of annoys me that the fact that I can take a Raspberry Pi, it's I can take the newest Raspberry Pi that has built-in uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and get two of them to talk to each other and play together as a toy. Uh, yeah, I just breached this. Well, to me, it seems like I breached the uh, some, if not all, the pattern. I mean, is that how it works? If you breach some of the patterns, can they take it to court for that? I'm certain that... No, I, I mean, to be honest, it doesn't make sense. If you change it slightly... If Well, the thing is, though, there... What is the claim? The claim is a lot more than just that, isn't it? It's also the uh, the information that's sent between them. What is that? Uh, to, to, for the number of control messages to uh, reproduction devices for counting, thereby... Yeah, they've even gone as far talking about the different messages and stuff that they, they can send to it. So to me, well, okay, I'll take it. I, let me take a step back. The pattern describes all the things the system can work. And if someone affects any aspect of the pattern, surely they can take it to court for that. Or otherwise, you can just, well, to be honest, there's a lot of people out there who tweak slightly. Well, to be honest, no, I'll take it back. You know what? I'm still annoyed at this because this will affect, I reckon it will affect, any decent toys out there who are or which are based on robots that have been moved uh, moved across. Uh, oh, I don't know. I I'm going on about this way too long. This is way too annoying, really. Yeah. I'll, I mean, the inventors. I mean, I'm not even going about saying their names. I'll, I'll I'll just post it out there and let you guys read through it. I just I don't know. The abstract was I I read the abstract and that annoyed me. And then I read uh, most of the claim and then I got to as far as the bit that about the message and at other point I just kind of took, took a step back and went, you know what, no, if I read any more of this, I'm just going to uh, lose my cool for the day. But to be honest, this is kind of like the reason why I just decided just to go for it. But I mean, they even mentioned things like a toy includes processor with processor coupled memory. They keep making that point. It's like, oh, yeah, okay, thanks. Uh, why? I'm going to claim, uh, this... I'm glad I'm not a pattern lawyer. I... This is, oh. God, no, this is too much for anybody to kind of deal with. Uh, portion, dispensing, expressing. I can't believe they've even gone as far as de they're going through the detail on, on the messages being sent to them from. Is that enough? Can I take a processor with a coupled memory and just don't bother implementing their 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 message, their, their, the setup they have for messaging each, between devices? Uh, what's this? Oh, why did they mention a USB dongle for? Uh, USB dongle communication protector according to the further aspect of event provides between at least one toy computer device. What? They even going as far as talking about computer... Oh, come on. They, they even brought... They, I, uh, this is preferably an interface such as contact surfaces. What, what's going on here? It's like you're describing a computer in a toy environment. Uh, the communication port is USB communication port. Probably the network is wireless. Uh, preferably, sorry, not probably. Yeah, I doubt I see the word probably in, in the pattern of this. Preferably, um, the network is wireless in accordance with further aspect of the invention. A system includes at least one toy and at least one computer. What? So, okay, I wish I had read further down before. I ch you, you know, this is what happens. I, I read the abstract, I got annoyed, I pressed record, and I'm reading it as I'm talking to you, uh, to this microphone. And I, I do need to kind of stop, up, stop talking about this in a second, actually focus on other bits of the podcast. Halloween related because right now I just feel like I'm just complaining. Okay, I apologize. 40 minutes I am complaining, but yeah, it's, it's yeah. So that project I, I described earlier about the um, the robots connected to the computer that to me seems to suggest that that itself is breaking their um, their pattern. But I created that way before they uh, they created this pattern. Should I be worried about that? I mean, that said though, that project is kind of long gone anyway. That even the source the source files aren't in, around. What? Why are you mentioning uh, the? You know what? Uh, I, I, this is the thing that I said at the beginning. The more I read about this, the more I read into it, 
the more annoyed I am. I, they mentioned Zigbee protocol. Uh, preferably the network control using Zigbee. Really? You know what? It's, am I able to find out the people who created this? I mean, let's have a look. The authors. The funny thing is, though, I searched for the word digital scary. And it's definitely what I got. It was scary. This is definitely a Halloween scare for me. So, inventors, can I find out the company that this was created for? I mean, I can see a logo. I'm guessing that's the company logo. The thing is, to be honest, though, this is the... What's this? This is the USPTO.gov. So, Global Patent Search Network, the United States Patent and Trademark Office, an agency for the Department of Commerce. And... I just want to see which company. Can I actually look at this? Do you want to just give me a glimpse of it? This 126 pages is in a text I don't recognize. Uh, well, I'm not going to be able to read that. Presumably it's been translated to other languages, maybe? You would assume so, wouldn't you? No, I'm not going to click 126 times just to see if I can find uh, any references to the company. I mean, I can see the logo from the first page, which is really annoying. If I can just find out what the company is, I can find, I can see if they actually created something that's related. In which case, this might actually make me feel a little better knowing this actually been created rather than just being patented for the sake of being patented. Because that, to me, would be how I lose sleep if it turns out this was just a patent for the sake of suing other people. Um, but let's have a look. What is this logo? I've, not, I've never seen this logo before. I mean, I put it up. I pulled up the link for the patent. See if anybody else uh, recognizes it. But this has been done 2010, 06, 11. Any references to... No. No hope. Can I search for them to the message? I mean, it, it's clearly been uh, translated, but... Disclosure, digital... It's kind of nice that this has highlighted the keyword that I searched, which in this case was digital, but I can't find where the scary came from. Uh, mode for invention. Embodiment of graph. Oh, I'm not going to read that now. I'll be here forever if you're actually listening to read through this. But to be honest, I do apologize. The fact I'm just, I, I, I've kind of been banging on this for so long now. Although I must say, though, I'm I'm kind of happy that I'm actually able to actually do this in real time, to be honest, because this is kind of frustrating. I'm sure you're all, I'm sure some, some of you may have the same issue as well. Ah, oh, don't tell me. You've also talked about the code in C code. Okay. Create instruction C code. Dictionary generated engine. Oh, that's interesting. I, but I might actually read a bit more about that. Let's have a look. XML. Ah, oh, okay. You clearly. So Pinterest, uh, so person S O A P. Apologize if I'm if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. Other PC or laptop on um, operating client application. Isn't this just? Uh, I feel like someone's, uh, you know, but they're obviously making references to the protocol that you, of, of the, inf the kind of information you can send between devices by like Wi-Fi. I feel like they've not actually said that anywhere. I'm sure they have, I'm just skipping way too much on the text. But I'm finding it interesting that they're actually making references to um, to how they're going to set it up, like the kind of message they're going to be sending between them. But firmware is located in the memory of the toy processor, and each time when the when the change or the updating subject uh, to the only downloading subject, just instruction sets and audio file. Once the translation instruction, oh my god, I can't believe they actually went as far as talking about that as well. But you know, oh, why did they use the word happy? That's interesting. Maps, oh my god, I definitely think uh, you all will actually gain from actually reading from this. This is uh, so way too interesting for my liking, anyway. Oh, there we go. Oh, digital, digital. Where's the word scary? That's what I wanted to see. I searched for the word scary. I want to see... Uh, they talk about the batteries. Yeah, this is scary. This It really is. I mean, it, I might not find the word scary, but this is kind of frightening. The fact that they're making exact references to things like what kind of batteries they're using, potential batteries, and they're just covering... I feel like they're covering their ass here. They're, they're going... They're going lithium, Nikon, uh, uh, Nicatamine... Uh, the 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 also double A's triple A's. Ah oh, man, the voltage levels or the voltage types are one point two volts lithium, three point seven. Oh my. Okay, yeah. So they're definitely we're going way too much on this. You know what? 
Yeah, I go. Uh, there we go. Finally found the word scary in this pattern. And what on earth is a mixture of all this? Oh man, this is just random references. I just basically the, the word scary I found the next to scary yellow. Is that a type of color? Oh, phrase. Phrase three. Uh, big black, scary yellow. Oh, that's actually. Wow, are they actually putting the phrases that they want the toy to say? So here's the question. If they specified so much of how the, the, the item works, does that mean if I were to change slightly something that they haven't actually talked about in this pattern, does that mean that that item is no longer within their pattern? Yeah, scary yellow comes back again. Running around. What's that? Scorpion, normal switch. Wow, okay. I'm going to stop now. I've, I've had enough. That's 20 minutes of my life and your life that uh, I don't want to be going through anymore. But anyway, that's fine. But uh, apart from that, I am actually finding it kind of interesting all the, all the pattern searches you can find in here. I was hoping to search for... Uh, I was hoping that the, that the filter can be set up so that you can actually search for the 31st of October. So you only see patterns that were published on those days. Not that they will make any difference whether they're actually going to be published for Halloween on those days. But at least just to see if any of those patterns have been polished on those interesting days. Um, I don't know, just out of curiosity, did someone actually get anything out of that? But So compressing code, uh, user interface for financial advisor system. Why would anybody need to pattern that? Describe user interface for financial advisor system according... This is what I mean, like the patterns are a really good way for you to see what other industries are doing to kind of expose yourself to other stuff. Because if you... If you ever wanted to kind of figure out or you wanted to get into a new industry, um, you, you, you're, well, I've been in that situation where I've always wanted to kind of, oh, how do I get into web development? How do I get into uh, HTML development? Well, not HTML, front-end development. How do I get into user interface or user testing kind of stuff? I know those in industries are more, well, they're easier to find out, find out more about those sort of stuff on the internet that you are, than you are to, say, finding out information about the nuclear industry or finding out more about the, say, um, well, you know, People have to sign firefighting equipment, you know, that kind of industry, what's, what's, you know, what's happening in there, what sort of um, um, improvements have been done on that. Okay, this is, uh, so this, so again, what I searched for was um, digital scary, and what's kind of funny, this uh, user interface with financial advisor system, the word scary has been highlighted in UI360 attempts to assist the user in the amount, and maybe... Hang on. You are three six attempts to assist the uh, the user in the amount and maybe a scary domain selection correct financial product to meet their required or uh, her associate. Why did I have to put the word her required for slash her associated there with uh, decision? It's interesting. They just put the word her right next to it. where's the uh... oh and there's the detail now detail prediction. Digital Icon Group 750. Hang on. Are you trying to say that people... Okay, you know what? I am going to stop. I use... According to the abstract UI 360 attempts to assist the user in the amount and maybe a scary domain selection correct financial product to meet the required her associated therewith decision of financial product. Yep, that makes sense. Perfect sense. So for those who understood that, please let me know. What that meant. I don't. The thing is, uh, as she probably already guessed, my English is not my first language. Uh, in fact, Spanish is my first language. Uh, but I've not done that in a long time. I was like, yeah, you know, I was ten years old when I moved to the UK, and so my Spanish is bad. I mean, when I mean bad, I, I it's like if someone who's fluent in Spanish was to listen to me speak Spanish, they may think I'm some sort of farmer in some obscure part of. Venezuela or, or maybe even somewhere in Spain. I'm going to stop reading patterns here because that's not what I wanted this episode to be about. I want to talk about really, I want to talk about projects that might have been interesting uh, to do in Halloween and to be honest though I kind of ran out of time to try and go through some of the projects that I've done in the past to kind of collate the information to talk about it for this episode. So instead I want to talk to you about Getting the motivation to work on projects because unfortunately that is exactly the issue I was facing with when I was trying to come up with a project to do for Halloween. And I don't know if, I'm sure there's plenty of you out there who've had the same issue. 
uh, when starting a new project and that's finding the motivation you've got the inspiration you've got the uh, uh, the idea of what you want to create and you know what you want to do and you're looking forward to it and you want to get on with it and then you kind of find it that actually yeah I really can't be asked to do it anymore and the thing is to be honest like the issue I have and I'm not blaming this on my daughter because you know she's newborn and everything else because uh, you know my focus and I'll be, up, I'll be up front my focus is her and making sure my business wrong to make sure that I can provide back to my family and so any secondary projects tend to just be put to one side because you know what's what is it worth me doing on that but the thing is though that the nice thing about projects I mean this is something I sort of tell people quite often but working on projects is a good thing it, it keeps you sane now and and I don't mean that working on projects is everybody's thing and everybody should be working on projects to be, to be kept sane. I don't, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that if, if you enjoy working on projects, then you want, then you need to work on projects to keep yourself sane because that's the thing you want to do. Um, I don't think I did that. I, I did justice explaining that. So I guess the way to say it is like this. So if you're the kind of person who likes to make things and do things, um, whether, and I'll, I'll be abstract with this. Uh, I'm sorry, not abstract. I'll be general with this. Say you're the kind of person who enjoys going for walks, uh, whether it's on the countryside or going to other parts of the world to try and explore and sort of stuff. If you enjoy doing that, right, and that brings you joy, if you suddenly have to stop doing that sort of stuff, then you do want to try and make sure that you find some free time to do that because otherwise you may actually be affecting both your happiness and, and I'll be up front. In some cases, I, I, I don't think a lot of people realize this, but your mental state is your health. If you're not happy, if for some reason something's making you, if bringing you down, it will have uh, an impact on your health. I, I may not necessarily be something that will show straight away, but it might be something as simple as actually affect on the kind of food decisions that you make, or it might be the kind of, uh, and it might affect the kind of things you might, or actually it might even affect uh, the kind of places you might want to go walk. Uh, for example, if you're not in the mood to go out, you know, drive 200 miles to the nearest um, countryside that you've not explored yet, kind of thing that you might not necessarily. I'm not even sure why I'm using uh, walk here as an example. It's not something that that I actually actively do. But going back to projects idea, kind of thing. So working on projects. I mean, I've always worked in projects even before I had my daughter, even before starting my business. It was something that I always did. I have long lines of project, long list of projects that I've not even bothered documenting on my website, mostly because the thing I was mentioning about writing, it's, it takes a lot of effort to make sure that I get it done right because I'm very, very conscious about of it. Um, and so it, you know, it, it, it demotivates you, and it's it's hard to kind of get something started. And so, I've, and so the whole thing with me is like I now I'm now in a state, and this is something that if you are thinking of doing contract work, it is definitely worth uh, keeping in mind. It is, you know, it you're doing contract work, you're constantly thinking, okay, I can't, should I really be working on this side project because I can just be working on a client's work right now and actually earn money? And, you know, that actually, de- and I'll be upfront, that to me does de- demotivate me from working on side projects that aren't related to both work or client-related projects. And, and I'm saying that, but the way, I mean, I'm sure it's different for different people. And so I'm, I've met people out there who don't need any type of motivation. They're always willing and want to do and always working towards how to do stuff and and I'll be up front I'm, I'm one of those who is an early riser early sleeper and you know always wants to make the most of the day you know as soon as the daylight's out there but you know having that um you know, hover over your head kind of thinking should I be working on this project because then I could just be working on this and actually earn something that would it will actually bring something to the table which means I can actually spend that resource that time that money or that earn earning on my actual family to actually do something for them and although don't get me wrong this is not meant to be like a you know you got to do the right thing kind of thing but I feel like that actually does affect um, the decision the kind of project you want you want to work on so what I was going to say well the point I'm trying to get at is that you have to be careful when you're having that train of thought because if you're not actually working on projects that make you happy or projects that that are pointless but they're actually fun and they, they bring joy to you then and there's some other reasons why you should do this in the first place, but, but then you're, the point is, you're, if you don't, if you're not doing them, you may actually be affecting both your mental state as well as your health. And I'll be upfront: um, working for yourself, it's very hard for you to be justifying. Um, well, I say that it's actually a lot easier for a contractor to take a day off to work on something that may or may not bring anything back. But I'm gonna say I'm, I'll be up there. I'll be upfront: you should. 
if you're a contractor, you should be allocating some time during the year. I'm saying the year just to be kind of general here, but you should be allocating some time to work on side projects, both to uh, add to your skills and to hone on your skills. Because even though the kind of contract work that you would be that you will be seeing day to day or you know, from client to client can vary, and that will add to the kind of skills that you can you can add to your you know to add to your belt kind of thing. Um, but it doesn't guarantee that you're going to get the kind of skills that you want to be working on in the future. Uh, for example, I'm an embedded engineer. That's my, well, I, I'm, I'm a robotic engineer, but the main skills that I have, my home skills, is embedded design. So hardware embedded, well, embedded hardware, embedded software. Um, and I could do that on the fly. I could do that very well. I, I can meet whatever standards that you want me to do. I have no issues with that. Um but the problem is that that's fine, but that, that, that won't suit every client that might come your way. For example, me being a robotic engineer, I have been exposed to mechanical designs. And if I focus too much on the firmware, I will run the risk of not, I don't even know why I even got to this part, part of the conversation, but you, I will run the risk of not having uh, a, a, a um, well, a honed skill on the mechanical side. I run the risk of not improving on that side of the skills and then when it comes to an actual working on a new client that they might require something you don't know you might struggle or you might not be able to meet it on time or you might even in some cases actually underestimate the time you've you've um, you put down for that so it's one of those things that you really ought to be doing and the reason why i'm bringing this up is I, I, going back to the reason why i brought this up is the halloween thing i every year i do this thing where i sit down and say actually this year i'm going to put something for halloween i'm gonna automate something for the sake of automating i'm gonna do something fun for halloween because you know, like uh, uh, you know, a lot of people do um, Christmas-related um, uh, hacks and makes and stuff, sort of stuff, and they do Halloween as well, and they do birthday ones, and, and you know, and like I said, there's like a million ideas that come out of that come come out of me and other people, and it's just a matter of trying to kind of um, come up with something that you want to do. But the thing is, it's finding the motivation to do that and finding the time to do that, and I have the time. I, I've, I've my daughter is at a stage now where um, she's you know, she's in a routine. It's easy to kind of uh, to deal with. Um, you know, couldn't couldn't be any a, a, any better. But it's finding the motivation that you're doing something that doesn't require me to feel guilty, and that I think that's the the issue I have: feeling guilty uh, of working on it because knowing that that actually doesn't add back to the family or add anything to what you know my daughter can gain from the future and my partner and anything like that. So it's kind of harder to kind of take on new projects that, uh, say, uh, families and friends want me to take on or anything like that. Which, incidentally, it's actually kind of an interesting thing, though, working on side projects. Because uh, recently I read uh, a tweet that Chris Gamel sent out. He's saying that he's going to be, be doing pro bono, um, pro, or he's going to be working at least on some projects for free, or at least, I think he said, something like five hours per week, wizard. Which, to me, I think, uh, to me, that seems like a lot of time you could be spending on a project for anybody else but then he made a point in the post which is i think uh the kind of uh, what i was trying to kind of get out there as well is that should hopefully give him an exposure to different type of projects he may not necessarily be exposed to which should help as he said quite rightly on his post should help him improve on skills that he may not have worked on as much as before or he feel like he's feeling falling falling back on or even expose him on new projects that he may not necessarily have kind of been been exposed to if he, he if he had gone and worked on it himself for example he, he mentioned that um that he's been using fusion 360 so it sounds like he, he does want to actually also um get involved with mechanical project which to be honest if anybody has an open project out there that um that are willing to kind of put it out there and have mechanical mechanical work then you know five hours for free if he's happy to join in there that you know makes sense and i would say the same thing to you if you're in, in if you're getting into contract work then you should try and have a plan for the uh, for the projects you want to work on, and you shouldn't feel guilty. I mean, for myself, I'm you know I'm having to kind of constantly think about uh, or outweigh the cost of you know how much time can I spend on this project and how much time can I be spending on that. You could argue though that obviously your free time is your free time. So when you finish your work, you know if you're working a nine to five job, for example, when you finish a five, then you should be working on your project. And so therefore, if you are working on contract work, if you're a contractor. You should work by the same rules, and I'll be upfront. In you know, I've had I've been told that so many times that you should be switching off after X amount of time. You know, after if you work this many hours a day, you should go home and switch off. And I'll be upfront as a contractor, if you switch off that easy uh, and 
you're and you're having issues with your business if you're finding that your business uh, isn't as successful and then you might want to consider why you're able to switch off so easily and is that a good thing because I'm, I'm yet to find a contractor uh, you know at least this might just be the people that I've been exposed with but I'm yet to, to meet another contractor who who have been very easily able to switch off after their time is up for the day because you are the person driving that business and unfortunately when you're working for a salary job you can go home at five and people can expect you to to finish off and switch off but then there's always somebody else within the business who have to take on the slack or there's always, there always, there always somebody else who has to deal with the potential issues that may come up outside the work hours like for example i mean it may not, it's not necessarily the same issue for larger corporations for example where uh other people assume okay like for example if you if you have issues i'm trying to come up with a, a good business that might be the case if you i guess it's down to, it's down to the service that they provide to be honest um i mean most companies, you're, larger companies, you aren't expecting to call up after five o'clock and actually get through to somebody. Where with a smaller with a smaller contractor, you know, one man band, it's usually a mobile phone, and usually the sort of stuff that they're working on means that they have to provide that, at, you know, that you know, on on job by job basis response. Um, and if it means that someone's going to call you in the middle of midnight because some sort of web server taking data log of the data that you've had going on has gone down, then you have to. You know, get on with it. And unfortunately, that basically means that more often than not, contractors, at least a one-man bank contractor, ha can't really just switch off. Ideally, you want to grow your business to the point where you can offload some of those issues to somebody else, so therefore let them not have to sleep at night in the middle of the night if there's an issue, but or find some other services to kind of help you out with that. But you know, it's harder for somebody to switch off, and I don't, I can't believe I went off into that topic, off in a tangent there. Um, the point is, though, that I was trying to find motivation to work on this project, and I had this brilliant idea. I, okay, I said brilliant, but it may not necessarily be a brilliant for somebody else. But I wanted to have an interactive, um, uh, well, I wanted to have an interactive um, pumpkin. So you can, you know how a lot of people tend to kind of cover our faces and stuff like that? I wanted mine to be a bit, a little bit more scarier. I wanted mine to be able to spit out fog uh, as people come in and just get it to start shouting out whatever it is that you want to shout out in this case will be things like get out of the front yard or okay probably not the best idea i've come out with but the point is i wanted to try that out see how it go and, and i figured it would be kind of fun to play with with a miniature fog machine especially now that there are so many e-cigarettes uh, equipment out there that should kind of allow for very easily implementing water vapored um fog coming out of the pumpkin although i don't know if it's going to be enough to flood the front yard or that might be like a really bad idea but anyway so I, I, the point is that the closer that they, they got to halloween the more i felt like oh but I'm, you know if i want to work on this it might actually take me more than just a day's worth of work or oh, i may need to actually do this or oh, but then i need the resources and it got to a point where i just kind of went yeah I, I don't really want to spend 10 20 hours working on this when i could just be working on i don't know some other client project where i can be calling up some client or i could be spending time with the family uh, yeah you know that's that's the sort of stuff but the, the 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 point is that even though that was the issue i was having i would definitely i mean it's something that i am constantly striving to make sure that i do a good mixture of and although even though the guilt's still there i still force myself to make sure i work on other projects that aren't related or aren't guaranteed to bring anything back in but it's something that kind of contributes and one such i mean just to kind of put it out to, to kind of make sure people are aware that I'm not just cutting out every, every little side project since I started the business, but there are plenty of projects that I am actually working on um, that aren't going to bring anything back to the business, and I'm just doing for the sake that it might actually be useful for other people. Uh, for example, the um, some of the contribution, which was uh, going back uh, a year or two ago, or at least just before the version 4 of Kaka came out, I did like a minor contribution for the bill of material, put it back in there, so I actually spent time on that. You know, it's not something that I needed to do. There were ways to go around the, the, the things that I could have done, but I wanted a way to, well, I wanted the bill of material output or the XML to be better uh, or to at least have the extra information that I needed. And even though there were other ways to go around it, I could have written some sort of script in Node.js to read the CACA, um, uh <clears throat> schematic files and actually extract the information, I thought, well, you know, I'll, I'll do it properly. I get it so that it's actually part of the uh, CACAD project so that 
it gets uh, given to other people so that others can have the same benefit then there was that and then there was the uh, Kaika Builder Material Library that I actually created on Node.js, which read the XML file that you can generate for Kaika so that you can customize whatever build material you wanted. And there was something that, again, I didn't need to go as far as actually creating that, but I figured if I can do that, I can put it out there for other people to work on. And then the other project, which is the recent one that I'm working on, uh, is the uh, Micro Robot, which I mentioned in the previous video, uh, video podcast, because you can't really see me right now, no, unless you're actually watching this on the on the YouTube channel, which incidentally you can see that when I post this. But the micro robot, um, again, that's something I'm just putting together, um, you know, on the spare time that I have within, you know, after hours or whatever it is, in the hope that, yeah, other people might find it useful and it's kind of fun. But, you know, that allows me to hone some of the skills that, are, that I've not been able to hone for quite a while. I, not so much in the electronics uh, in this case, but it's more so in the other techniques such as the image processing, and the neural network stuff and machine learning stuff that I've not done in a long time. I'm trying to kind of get back into that. Although, arguably, it would have been just easier just to get a webcam and computer, but then that wouldn't really that wouldn't really be more robotic-related project. It would be more just, ah, oh, here we go. Here's a webcam, hook it up to the computer or a Raspberry Pi. We're good to go. But no, but I wanted to... Why am I even justifying this? It's, it's, it's a side project. You, know, you don't have to justify every little side project people do. Really, do you? It's no longer fun if you have to justify it. But... Yeah, the, the point is like a little small robot platform that I can just play around with and experiment with different various image processing. And it's all standalone and then eventually it will become a bit more computer power and then eventually I'll connect a second robot to that wirelessly. Oh, no, I can't because it's been patented. Ah, you know what? What a stupid project. I'm going to have to cancel that now, you know, because somebody out there decided to patent something. Oh, no, I can't put it out there because it's not going to be a toy. In fact, if I... Mm, if I wasn't to sell it, if I was to, you know, if I ever got as far as creating it and decide to sell it for whatever reason and, you know, and have multiple of them talking to each other, could I sell it not as a toy, even though it's intended for people to play with it? Could I sell it as a house tool? Yeah, no, that's stupid. Can I sell it as a equipment, a household? Ah, there was a, you know what? I put it out. If anybody's got a better idea of what it could be sold as to avoid this whole toy title, maybe that's that's all I need to do. Avoid the fact that it's no longer a toy; it's more of an interactive uh, learning tool. That's it. Even though that's technically what I wanted to do with my thing, set it up so that people can also learn from it. But yeah, that's what it'd be. It's a learning. It's, it's an interactive learning tool, and. Even though there's going to be multiple robots talking to each other through a coupled memory via Wi-Fi, it's still a learning tool. It's not a toy. And if your kids start playing with it, you just tell them, no, learn image processing instead. If you learn image processing, then the person who created doesn't get sued and doesn't end up losing his, um, his, his, his equipment. That's what it is. It's a learning tool. No, that is just stupid. Just, damn it, to be honest. Easiest thing to do is not even bother selling it. Just put it out there. People can go and do whatever they want with it. Uh, just don't call it a toy. That's all it is. Just don't call it a toy. So with that in mind, I am leaving you to it. And happy Halloween. I hope you get as frightened as I have about this pattern. And I hope you have as much sweet as you need to before you overdose in sugar, which you shouldn't. You are possibly an adult by this stage, in which case you can do whatever you want. Because you are an adult and you can decide to eat ice cream in the middle of midnight if you want to. Uh, or you can stay up and work on robots. Or you can do whatever you want because, you know, I'm not your parent. And hopefully you get to have fun. For me, on the other hand, I'm just going to go and watch my favorite movie in my favorite time of the year. Uh, well, one of my favorite time of the year. And that is uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. And the best thing about it is that I can watch it again at Christmas. Because it's also a Christmas movie. So... That's it for me, and that's my sort of day sorted out. If you enjoy this podcast, do not forget to subscribe. That you know, I would definitely appreciate that. You can you can subscribe by your favorite podcast medium system that you want to use, RSS feed, and so I've got the iTunes. You can also subscribe in YouTube. YouTube is a brilliant place to go to because you know you can just hit subscribe and good to go. Uh, but please do feel free to leave feedback, and if you read the pattern and you think that I'm wrong, do let me know because. You know, 
I may lose some sleep, maybe an hour's worth of sleep. I don't know. But to be honest, I have plenty of lost sleep on the whole thing about this whole pattern thing. So I'll leave it to as that. Uh, so that said, uh, feel free to subscribe. Don't forget to do that. I'll say it again. And I am a U- I'm in YouTube. No, sorry, not YouTube. I'm in Twitter. So you can find me over there, both my company and myself. I am, my username is Optic Worm, and the company is Hashtifanelec. All the new posts for the podcast come out there first, and then they probably trickle through to the Optic Worm account through the Magic Fairies. And that's it. And don't forget, if you're going to like that robot, don't forget it's not a toy. It is a learning system uh, or a learning tool. Well, it's going to be a learning machine, a learning computer, as Arnie would say. So that's it. See you later. And bye.